Hi, I'm Andy with Anchor Security and a professor of cybersecurity at the University of Delaware. Uh, we're going to talk now about the second dimension of the NIST framework, which is protection. So how do you protect your valuable data that you've identified in part one? One of the things that you might uh, think about here is sort of the classical defenses might be something like multi-factor authentication, maybe your antivirus software, maybe even a really strong firewall. Uh, one of the things I think is true, in my opinion, is that 90% of the preventable cybersecurity attacks come from mistakes that your staff make. So another thing that should be on your radar is what I would call strong role-based access control, which sounds a little fancy, uh, but what you really want to think is if you had to fire somebody, when they leave your company, what is it that you do? If what you're thinking is, I'm going to change all of our shared passwords, then you definitely don't have good access control. Uh, what you want is the ability to flick a switch the moment that you have to let somebody go and that they know about it, right? And so deploying a system like that doesn't have to be overly complex. It can work with the software that you have, but you want to know who has access to your most important data and can you control when they have access to it. Uh, another thing that this sort of 90% figure leads us to is that you should train your employees. Um, and a couple of different dimensions that really matter. One of them is password management. So probably what you think of as strong passwords is not very strong. Uh, and if it is something that has been used in more than one place, it's not a very strong system. And even I would say that if you need to have lots of complex passwords memorized for a lot of different sites, that's probably too much burden for you as a human. What you want might be a password management system or something that is sensible but very strong and to really understand the amount of uh, entropy inside of a password. We can help you with that and, and make sure that everybody's trained on what that really means, but if it's weak, you're weak. Uh, another thing that might matter for your employee training is making sure that they're protected against phishing scams and even social engineering scams, which are on the rise. That's something where you might want a third-party service to intentionally and um, pleasantly hack your own people. Uh, so that way you can know who's the weakness and, uh, and make sure that you're improving over time with those sorts of stats. Another big one that falls under the protection umbrella is what I would say having your most precious data encrypted at rest. Now I'm a mathematician and I really like cryptography and one of the things that's true is that when you have good crypto, it's the strongest part of your entire cybersecurity platform. When you have bad crypto, it is the weakest part of your platform. So it's something that you do want an expert hand in there just to give you advice early on. But here in the modern age, getting world-class, top-notch crypto for low cost is easier and easier every day. So there's no excuse not to do it. Um, another thing that we will say amongst ourselves is that there's two types of companies. The companies that have been hacked and the companies that don't yet know they have been hacked. And what I mean by that is that despite all of your best efforts at protecting yourself, you should expect something to get through at some point. And that's going to lead us to the third dimension of the NIST framework, detection, which we'll do next.